The sea is every bit as beautiful as it is dangerous. Things that fall into the sea have a nasty habit of never coming out again. And even some of the things that exist within the sea naturally can be dangerous. The same can be sometimes said of rivers, lakes, and streams. With that in mind, let's check out some incredible underwater discoveries. The idea of a brine pool under the sea sounds faintly ridiculous. After all, how can a pool exist in an area that's already full of water? The answer is that we're talking about two different types of water. Brine doesn't mix or interact with the water around it, which is why and how there are dozens of deep sea brine pools in the Red Sea. They're hypersaline lakes and stay close to the seafloor. These pools are among the most extreme environments on Earth but are dangerous to explore or even to get close to because of their total lack of oxygen. We have to study them though, because doing so could help us understand how life could exist on other planets. It's commonly accepted that life on Earth began in the sea, most likely in anoxic environments just like these brine pools. In the brine pools, we find extremophile microbes capable of surviving in conditions that would be fatal for upwards of 90% of all life on Earth. Examining the properties of these microbes might tell us how to look for and identify life on water world exoplanets, but the microbes might also be the keys to the development of new medicines. Molecules with anti-cancer and antibacterial properties have been extracted from brine pool microbes in the past and will be again in the future. The summer of 2022 was a hot one for many European countries. Water levels in rivers and lakes dropped across the continent and the River Danube dropped to its lowest level in decades. In doing so, it exposed the broken remains of dozens of Second World War-era German warships close to the Serbian river port town of Prahavo. The reason there are so many wrecks concentrated in such a comparatively small area is that they were deliberately scuttled by the Nazis as the Black Sea Fleet retreated from the advancing Soviet forces in 1944. Local sailors have long known of the presence of the ships below the water because they can still occasionally pose a hazard to passing boats, but it's rare to see them exposed to the air. More than 20 wrecks have been identified near Prahavo, and some of them are still thought to contain live ammunition and explosives. The Serbian government briefly considered paying experts to safely dispose of the wrecks, but quickly backed away from the idea when they were given an estimate of $30 million for the necessary work. When we talk about creatures having natural armor, we usually mean that they have scales made of bone or thick skin. In the case of the scaly foot snail known as Chrysomalian squamiferum though, it literally has natural armor. Also known as the pangolin snail, this is the only animal in the world that's been observed to incorporate iron into its exoskeleton. You'll only find the unusual snail in the hydrothermal vents of the Indian Ocean. The unusual chemical compositions of hydrothermal water are responsible for the remarkable differences in coloration between the creatures, as well as using iron sulfide to create its plated shell, the pangolin snail sometimes uses gregite and pyrite. There's so much metal in their composition that the snails are magnetic. Scientists aren't exactly sure about the process that allows the snails to extract chemicals from the water and create their armor, but they think it's probably a response to the presence of predators like crabs, which also congregate near hydrothermal vents in the hope of finding something good to eat. Sadly, pangolin snails are now considered an endangered species because of the effects of deep sea mining. Of all the shipwrecks in the world, none have ever been discovered at a greater depth than that of the USS Samuel B. Roberts. The American World War II Navy ship was discovered at a depth of over 22,600 feet, broken in two pieces off the coast of the Philippines. The discovery was confirmed in June 2022, 88 years after the destroyer escort sank during the Battle of Lake Gulf in October 1944. Many military historians consider the Battle of Lake Gulf to be the largest naval battle in human history. The USS Samuel B. Roberts, also known as the Sammy B, made the brave but questionable decision to attack a fleet of Imperial Japanese naval ships despite being comprehensively outnumbered and outgunned. One of the ships that attacked was the Yamoto, 
which was the biggest battleship ever built. The Sammy B dealt significant damage to the fleet before succumbing to enemy fire, sinking in the Philippine Sea with a loss of 89 of the 224 crew members aboard at the time. The wreck of the ship is so deep in the water that salvaging anything from it is likely to be impossible, and such a mission would be unlikely to be attempted anyway because it's a war grave. The idea of diving into an abandoned uranium mine is enough to fill most people with terror, but some people do it for fun. Diving expeditions to abandoned tunnels and mines are becoming increasingly popular despite the dangers associated with them. And the old Kowery uranium mine in Poland is especially popular with tourists. Entry to the mine can only be gained through a long, claustrophobia-inducing tunnel with no natural source of light which eventually opens up into a cavern with colonies of bats living in the ceiling. If that isn't enough to send you back the way you came, you'll eventually know you've reached the mine when you come across the discarded shell of what might once have been a nuclear weapon. The mine was founded in January 1948 and closed in 1963, after the quality of the uranium ore extracted from the mine deteriorated to the point where it was almost worthless. Chillingly, None of the workers employed here were told the truth about what they were mining until after it closed. The entire mine flooded naturally shortly after it closed because there was no longer anybody there to pump or drain the groundwater again, so it's been like this ever since. In the year 1570, a group of 40 people, two priests, 23 novices, seven students, and eight collaborators set sail from Brazil to Portugal. They were Jesuits, and they were on a mission to convert people in the New World to their faith. None of them ever saw home again. The missionaries made a planned stop in the Canary Islands, which, unbeknownst to them, were full of French Huguenot Calvinist pirates. Perhaps unwisely, the Christians made a show of celebrating their faith by marking the Eucharist at the Hermitage of Our Lady of Sorrows in Tazacorte. In doing so, they attracted the attention of the pirates, who followed them back to their ship then brutally attacked them. They were beaten and robbed, after which they were tossed into the sea. Witnesses said that some of them appeared to still be alive when they went into the water, but none of them survived. Ever since then, the missionaries have been known as the Martyrs of Tazacorte, but it still took more than 400 years for them to receive an appropriate memorial. In 1999, the Council of La Palma created an underwater memorial to the martyrs in the shape of four stone crosses sunk into the sea at the approximate site of their martyrdom. For some reason, swords end up in lakes more often than they statistically should. Stories about swords being thrown into lakes always reminds us of King Arthur, Excalibur, and the Lady of the Lake. But we don't have to look far for a real-world example. In April 2020, a boat paddler spotted a strange-looking object on the banks of Lake Zurich close to Frienbach in Switzerland and moved closer for a better look. It didn't take long to identify the object as a sword. When experts from the Office of Culture examined the weapon, they were able to date it to the 16th century. Found alongside the sword were an axe and an awl, although it isn't known whether the artifacts are connected to each other. Despite its age and the fact that it spent so many years underwater, the sword is remarkably well preserved, save for the fact that the tip of the blade is missing. Even the pommel and quill of the sword hilt are still visible. After being retrieved from the water and cleaned up, the weapon went on display in the Swiss National Museum. Historical records tell us that a Spanish ship called the San Francisco set off from the Philippines to Mexico in 1609. It never arrived in Mexico and was never seen again, so it was assumed to have sunk in a storm. There was no evidence to support that theory until November 2017 when a team of marine archaeologists recovered what they believed to be a cannonball from the vessel. No further evidence has been recovered since but the cannonball is of the right design and seems to come from the right era. So it's a possible clue as to the location of the shipwreck. The reason so many people want to find the wreck of the San Francisco is that it's said to have been laden heavy with exotic treasures when it disappeared. 
The discovery of the cannonball occurred more than 130 feet below the surface off the coast of Iwawada in Japan's Chiba Prefecture. A piece of timber was found at the same time as the cannonball, but can't be conclusively linked to the shipwreck. If the San Francisco shattered into pieces as it sank, it's bad news for treasure hunters. More than 400 years later, what's left of its cargo could be spread out across several miles of seabed. When a plane crashes into the water, it's unlikely to ever come back out again. The seas are full of wrecked planes. However, not every plane in the seas ended up there because of a crash or an accident. As an example, here's an old Lockheed Martin L-1011 TriStar plane on the bottom of the Red Sea. The plane's wings have been shorn, but it's otherwise mostly intact and still has its three engines and tail fin. The plane was first registered during the 1980s and served several airlines including Royal Jordanian, TAP Air in Portugal, and Novair in Sweden before finishing its career back in Portugal with Lozair, retiring somewhere around 2011. At one stage, it was scheduled to be scrapped, but instead it was brought to the Gulf of Aqaba in Jordan in 2019 and deliberately sunk to become an artificial reef and nurture the growth of marine life. The project's a success. Not only is the plane a big hit with diving tourists, but there's also now huge sponges surrounding the fuselage accompanied by octopuses and pufferfish. The plane's innards have also developed a thick coating of marine life but are otherwise unharmed. The whole concept of creating an underwater sculpture park seems odd to us. Surely the point of creating art is for it to be seen by other people. You're never going to reach a mass audience by putting your art beneath the waves. Nevertheless, the Museum of Underwater Sculpture in Aia Napa, Cyprus opened to scuba divers and snorkelers for the first time in August 2021. Aia Napa is far better known for its wild party scene than it is for its works of art, but perhaps the creation of the unconventional museum is part of an attempt by the town to shake off its reputation for hedonism. Interested tourists will find the museum, which is also known by the shorter name of Musan, about 600 feet off the coast of the island. It's the work of the British artist Jason DeCaris Taylor, who's already well known for creating underwater art in other parts of the world, including France and Spain. He made his sculptures by lowering 13-ton hybrid trees into the water, then carving tough shapes into them, including children at play and headless bodies. All of the statues are pH neutral, so they'll attract and provide new homes for marine life in years to come. We've already proved that there are some strange sights to be seen beneath the waves, but this next sight is bizarre even by the standards we've set already. It's a fully functional post office, and anyone willing to put on a scuba mask and swim down to it is welcome to use it to post a message to their loved ones back home. The one-of-a-kind facility is off the coast of the tiny island of Afate in Vanuatu. The office isn't permanently staffed for obvious reasons, but if you leave your waterproof message inside a box in the post office, it'll be collected by a specially trained scuba post officer who visits the office four times each day to collect letters. It's one of the quirkier facilities on offer to tourists within the Hideaway Island Marine Sanctuary and has been open since 2003. During its 20 years of operation, the post office claims to have served about 100,000 people. It also claims to be the only underwater post office in the world. As far as we're aware, it has no competition in that respect. The so-called Yanaguni Monument in Japan is such a challenging discovery that there are some scientists who refuse to accept it as a human-made monument at all. It's hard to look at these pictures and think that Yonaguni could have been created any other way, though. The various underwater structures have a symmetry and shape that strongly suggests they're unnatural. Most mainstream scientists claim that our eyes are deceiving us and the shapes are simply the result of the rocks being shaped by flowing water over the course of several million years. The water theory sounds implausible, but then again, what kind of ancient civilization could have built all this? It's 100 feet tall and five times as wide as it is tall, with edges that come to right angles and faces that are parallel. 
It even seems to have a staircase leading to its summit where we find a rectangular pool and an aperture in the shape of a triangle. If this is the work of a lost civilization, it must have been a mighty one, and yet we have no idea who they were. If, on the other hand, it's all the work of nature, we need a good explanation of how and when nature makes right angles in stone. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.